Hello, human geographers. We are back at it again this evening. Tonight, we are going to examine the factors that contribute to changes in population characteristics. Let's begin with the study of population known as demography. We can define this as the scientific study of population characteristics. Our current global population is almost five times higher than it was just a hundred years ago. And it's expected to grow to almost 10 billion by 2050 and over 11 billion by the end of the century. So how did we get to this point and where do we go from here? Population dynamics refers to the growth and change of the human population. The Industrial Revolution had a huge impact on demographic characteristics in Western Europe and North America. Even still, most of the new population growth will occur in developing countries, particularly countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, South Asia, and Southeast Asia. So tonight, we will examine the different factors associated with fertility, mortality, and growth that influence our demographic changes, but also the economic, political, environmental, and cultural factors that influence demography. It's going to be a vocab heavy lecture, so let's dive in. Let's begin with two common measures of fertility or birth rates. Crude birth rate or CBR is the total number of live births in a year for every thousand people in the population. It's known as crude birth rate because it looks at the total population without regard for the population composition. For example, if a country has a large number of women in their childbearing years, it would likely have a higher CBR than one with mostly older women. But crude birth rate doesn't consider the age or sex of the population. The global crude birth rate is roughly 18 per thousand people, but in core countries, it's 10 or 11 per thousand. While in semi-periphery countries, it may be in the high teens or low 20s per thousand. And amongst the least developed countries, we see crude birth rates in the 30s per thousand. Generally, the lowest crude birth rates are in Western Europe, and the highest are in Sub-Saharan Africa. The same can be said for the total fertility rate, or TFR which is the average number of children a woman will have throughout her childbearing years. So we're examining the average number of babies per woman from roughly age 15 to age 49, at least according to the Population Reference Bureau. TFR is considered a more accurate measure of fertility than crude birth rate because it focuses on women in their childbearing years and can reveal the average family size in a population. This eliminates some of the confusion surrounding the age and sex distribution in a population. The average TFR is just below 2.5 babies per woman, but in Europe it's 1.6, while in Sub-Saharan Africa it's 4.6, including the highest TFR in the world in Niger at over seven babies per woman. And there are several factors that contribute to declining fertility rates. As more people move to urban areas, fertility rates typically go down. It's more expensive to have a large family in a city compared to the rural countryside. Add to that the fact that rural areas may see kids as an economic benefit because they can help with work on the farm. So as countries industrialize, there's less need for manual labor through the introduction of new machinery. The level of economic and social freedom for women can also influence fertility rates. In countries with high educational achievement for women, more abundant job opportunities, and greater access to contraception, 
fertility rates tend to be lower. However, in countries where women are expected to marry young and care for the family rather than work, fertility rates are often higher. Culturally, some groups have traditionally had larger families. Catholics and Muslims have traditionally opposed artificial forms of birth control, while followers of Confucianism have valued larger families. And governmental policies, such as the one-child policy in China, led to a rapid decline in fertility rates. But countries like France, Sweden, South Korea, and Singapore have policies that favor larger families, like extended maternity leave and tax breaks that may encourage couples to have more children. This is in part because countries with very low fertility rates may be below replacement level. Replacement fertility is the number of children each woman must have to keep the population stable without immigration. When the TFR is at 2.1 babies per woman, that is considered replacement fertility. If the TFR is below 2.1, as it is in Europe, for an extended period of time, then the population will have natural decrease as mortality exceeds fertility. Mortality, or deaths, are a major component of the study of demography. There are a number of metrics associated with mortality, but there are two especially prominent ones. Crude death rate, or CDR, is the total number of deaths in a year for every thousand people in the population. It is again called crude because it relates death to the entire population without distinguishing between younger people and older people. Generally, crude death rate below 10 is considered low and above 20 is considered high. But CDR can be misleading. Many core countries have a large elderly population with a high life expectancy, which is the average number of years an individual can be expected to live, given current social, economic, and medical conditions. Life expectancy at birth is the average number of years a newborn infant can expect to live. So many core countries have longer life expectancies of more than 80 years in some countries due to improvements in food supply and distribution, nutrition, better quality and more accessible health care, as well as improvements in sanitation and clean water supplies. So if a country has a larger population of people who are older, they might actually have a higher crude death rate than a country with a relatively young population. In fact, the global CDR is about 7.7 .7 per thousand, while in more developed countries, they often have a CDR of about 10 per thousand, while LDCs have a CDR near 7 per thousand. But there are some countries that are experiencing war or have unhealthy living conditions like unclean water, poor diet, or poor quality housing that might have a higher crude death rate and lower life expectancy. In some periphery countries, the life expectancy is around 50 years of age. And those same conditions, unclean water or lack of sanitation, can lead to a high infant mortality rate, or IMR, which is the total number of deaths in a year among infants under one year old for every thousand live births in a society. Many demographers consider IMR to be the best single indicator of living standards because it's affected by so many different variables, health, nutrition, sanitation, education, housing, and access to medical care and medicine. 
Throughout history, prior to the Industrial Revolution, the infant mortality rate was nearly 200 to 300 babies per thousand who would die before their first birthday. That means 20 to 30% of all babies were dying in their first year of life. Today, the global IMR is 31 per thousand, about 3%. But there are huge disparities between core countries and periphery countries. Core countries generally have IMRs near 5 per thousand. For example, Finland and Norway have IMRs of 2.5 per thousand. And the U.S. is about 6 per thousand. On the other hand, the average infant mortality rate in a periphery country is around 50 to 70 babies per thousand. But Afghanistan is over 110 babies who die in their first year. But with all that, the global average for infant mortality rate, about 31 per thousand. As countries provide better access to clean water, improved sanitation, and health care, particularly prenatal care for mothers and their babies, infant and child mortality rates will decline. Child mortality is a figure that describes the number of children that die between the first and fifth years of their lives in a given population. In fact, when children survive past the age of five, the odds are very good that they will live nearly to their life expectancy. But many factors influence mortality rates. I focus primarily on the level of development as that is a huge factor. But what you eat and drink, or what you have access to eat and drink, impacts mortality. Improving medical care, providing clean water, and access to safe sanitation systems prevents the spread of disease. War, famine, and natural disasters are also factors that can impact a country's mortality rates. Our final part of this equation is the relationship between fertility and mortality. The combination of births and deaths that contribute to population growth. The demographic equation is the formula that calculates population change. The formula finds the increase or decrease in a population. The formula is calculated as follows. Births minus deaths plus or minus net migration. For example, it took roughly 126 years to go from 1 billion people to 2 billion. But then it only took 44 years to add another 2 billion. That was because there were significantly more births than deaths. In general, crude death rates do not vary as much as crude birth rates. So population growth rates tend to follow changes in CBR. For example, the countries with the highest birth rates tend to also have the highest natural increase rates. Natural increase rate, or NIR, and be aware you may also see it as rate of natural increase, RNI, is the percentage growth of a population in a year computed as the crude birth rate minus the crude death rate. Natural increase of a population does not reflect either emigrant or immigrant movements. The global natural increase rate peaked in 1963 at about 2.2% and is projected to slow down to nearly zero by 2100. And the current global natural increase rate is about 1%. And there is a strong negative correlation between natural increase rate and urbanization levels. As a country becomes more urbanized, the natural increase rate declines. The fastest growing countries are less developed countries, like those in Sub-Saharan Africa. While 
slow growth countries include MDCs like Canada, Switzerland, and New Zealand. However, there are about 20 countries with negative NIRs, which is known as natural decrease. Germany and Japan are the leading examples, but the rest are found in Eastern Europe. Using the natural increase rate, we're able to calculate a country's doubling time. This is the time required for a population to double in size. To calculate doubling time, we use the rule of 70. Now, I don't love this, but they have asked students to calculate the rule of 70 on the AP exam. So please do write down this equation it's pretty simple. Divide the number 70 by whatever the natural increase rate is. For example, Ethiopia's rate of natural increase is 2.6%. So you divide 70 by 2.6. And that would mean that Ethiopia's doubling time would be just under 27 years. So Ethiopia would have to provide twice as much housing, education, jobs, healthcare, fresh water, and other resources in just under three decades. That could be challenging, especially for developing countries. The United States rate of natural increase is 0.3%. So 70 divided by 0.3 yields a doubling time of over 230 years. But that assumes a constant rate of natural increase and does not account for migration into the country. Shifting gears, let's talk about two more demographic changes that are influenced by patterns of fertility. Demographic momentum is the tendency for population growth to continue despite rapid changes to fertility rates, such as due to strict family planning programs, because of a relatively high concentration of people in their childbearing years. Essentially, a population can continue to grow considerably, even if the TFR declines to near replacement levels. If there are a large number of people under, say, age 15, there will be a considerable increase in the population despite declines on a per woman basis. The United States witnessed this in the 1980s because the baby boom generation of the 1950s began having children of their own, despite the fact that the total fertility rate that is babies per woman had nearly been cut in half. And when the total fertility rate remains at replacement level, 2.1 babies per woman, for a considerable period of time, a country can enter ZPG, or zero population growth, which is a decline of the total fertility rate to the point where the natural increase rate equals zero. Essentially, when the TFR stays at 2.1 babies per woman, the demographic equation the births minus deaths will equal zero. And when a country sustains it for many years, that country achieves ZPG. Now, I know that was a lot of vocabulary terms tonight, but we will continue to examine these concepts in greater depth and detail, both in class and in future lectures. Have a good evening, everyone.